Okay, guys, I'm back with another video. And against my better judgment, I went ahead and watched uh, the new Masters of the Universe Revelations. And <sighs> this is trash. Uh, okay, well, this is garbage. Uh, the animation is the only thing it's got going for it. It's really good. Uh, but I just... You know what? They should have just went ahead and rebooted the series and not claimed that it was going to be a spiritual successor to the 83 to 85, or sorry, 83 to 86 series. Uh, that would have been better. But don't say this is a spiritual successor to the original version. And yet, some of these characters aren't even the same. Uh, Tila, number one. The Tila that's in this show is not the Tila that's in the 80s version. I don't know where she is. Maybe, maybe she's from the 02, 03 version. And maybe she's from the 90s version. I don't, I don't even think Tila's in the 90s version. But... Uh, I think it was like the New Adventures of He-Man or some crap like that. But this is, okay, the intro, let's start from the beginning. I got the animation out of the way, which is good. I can't, I can't knock the animation. The intro, the very beginning when the title screen is coming up, it's very short, but it looks like they tried to take cues from the Superman movie from 77. And then the, the, the voice acted prologue is lame. And they tried to rip off the prologue from Masters of the Universe movie from 87 with Dolph Lundgren and Frank Langella. And for some, for people who always claim how much they hate that movie, which I love it. I mean, it's got these issues, but I still love the movie. Why rip from it, you know? Uh, the voice acting is garbage. Cringer is god-awful. Orko is lame. And Sarah Michelle Gellar is just bland. There's no range, no emotion, no nothing. I've never been a big Sarah Michelle Gellar fan anyway. I mean, other than the fact that I always thought she was really pretty. Uh... I never watched Buffy, but even uh, before Buffy, and even before, I believe she was on All My Children as, uh, I think, Erica's daughter, Erica Kane, was her name? Uh, Erica Kane, uh, Susan Lucci's character. I think her daughter or younger sister or some crap like that. But even before all that, she was in this teen soap opera called Swan's Crossing, if you remember that. And that came out, I think, 90 or 91, which was garbage, but, you know. Uh, I forgot her name off that show. But anyway, the voice acting is garbage. Uh, some, some of the dialogue is horrendous. And I know the 80s version had a lot of cringy dialogue or one-liners, but when you first see Evelyn and she makes this line, she says this line like, uh, what was it? I may not be clawful, but I can be awful. That was like, oh my God, just stop, really? And I can't see sorcerers being so stupid that she just lets, uh, a shape-shifting 
Skeletor just walk right into the castle. And Faker walk right into the castle. It's like, come on, man, really? She's not that stupid. I mean, if her magic is so powerful, how come she couldn't see through uh, that little ruse, you know? That didn't make any sense, but whatever. Uh, another part that didn't make any sense was during Tila's uh, Man at Arms ceremony, uh, Orko puts Cringer in a bubble, and you clearly see Cringer scratching at the bubble with his claws, and yet nothing happens. Like the bubble doesn't pop or anything. Yeah, here comes Adam with a pin or a toothpick or something and pops the bubble. I'm like, okay, whatever. That didn't make any sense. Logically, didn't make any sense. Uh, when we first see Adam transform and he draws the sword and says, you know, by the power of Grayskull, that part right there has zero energy whatsoever. He might as well have been asking somebody for the weather, you know? And then finally, when he says, I have the power, then, I mean, well, hold up. Yeah, when he says, I have the power, then he puts some oomph into it, you know? But before that, it's just like a real lazy, you know, by the power of Grayskull, you know? Just, uh, that was bad. I hated that part. Uh... couple of more parts I thought was kind of lame. When they're at the Battle of Grayskull and Beastman is about to squash Duncan with the... Uh, I forgot those things are called. Uh, but it's like a... It's like a... Uh, what are the things called? Oh gosh. Uh... Well, you know what? Let me see if I can just find the scene. Let's see if I can go back some kind of way. And I don't like the design of that sword. It just, I don't know, it doesn't, I don't like this, the design of it. I kind of like the other, when it was uh, the classic 80s, because it was attached right here. Okay, well, thing doesn't want to move. Oh, but uh, those things, I think they're called a ballast. Uh, Beastman is driving this vehicle, and I, I think they're called ballast. Or something like that. But it has like a rock on the end of it. And you cut the rope and the, it launches the rock. But anyway, he's uh, driving one of those devices or one of those vehicles. And he goes to launch the rock at Duncan. And Duncan stops and crouches down. He man, you know, gets in front, blocks the rock from hitting him. But then it pans out to a wider view. And the rock is coming nowhere near smashing Duncan. And it's not like he moved out of the way. It's like, oh, okay, that was kind of garbage. But uh, after that scene, uh, when he and the Skeletor are fighting, once again, they took a line from the 87 movie. And he says, let this be our final battle which is the same line from the 87 movie, you know, when they're fighting at the end of the movie. Same exact line. So it's like they're doing a mishmash of their own thing, plus the 87 movie, and a couple of bits from the 80s classic cartoon. You do, you do see a couple of characters, which is pretty cool, but they don't do anything. Moss Man is in there for a little bit. Beast Man, uh... You see uh, Triclops, he's in there for a little while. Uh, I think I think there's a scene of Trapjaw in there. And uh, after they kill... After, 
Sorry about that. That was my phone going off. Uh, after Joker, sorry, Joker, gosh. After Skeletor kills Mossman, he makes a line about pulling a few weeds. And it sounded just like the Joker. It sounded like something the Joker would say to Batman. And granted, it's the same voice actor. That's why. But I just wish they would have gotten a different voice actor. I don't want Skeletor sounding like Joker, you know? They should, they should have just either gotten Alan Oppenheimer, brought him back, and I know he's an old man, but still, if they can use him as Moss Man, why not use him as Skeletor, you know? Unless there were some legal reasons of why he couldn't do it, but I don't want Skeletor sounding like the Joker. But so, uh, they're fighting. And Skele uh, He-Man stabs Skeletor, and the sword goes through him and unlocks some kind of magical device. And they explain what it is and blah, blah, blah. And Skeletor says, you finally use that sword the way it was meant to be used. And the device opens up and it's some crystal or orb. And the Castle Grey Skull is not there. It's an illusion. And Skeletor, for some reason, just knew all of this stuff. Where did he get the information from? And if he knew that before, why did it take him all these trials to come to that? I, I, that, that didn't make any sense. Maybe they'll explain it later. But... That didn't make any sense. So, uh, dude. and then, uh, He-Man, uh, sorry, Sorceress, there's some weird power fluctuation thing and magic is in, it's about to blow up the Earth. Well, not Earth, but Eternia. So, He-Man breaks the sword of power into two which, if you remember the cartoons, i uh, sorry, the toys, that was a thing from the toy line because I had He-Man and Skeletor and both of them had the same sword. Well, He-Man's was the gray, silver, and Skeletor's was purple. And, uh, but it's the same sword and if you put them both together, they would, you know, fit into one sword. I have to show a picture, let me see if I can find the picture. Of the one I had as a kid. Uh, I think it was like Power Punch He Man or something like that, it was called. Let me see. But it was the one where you hit his chest and it, like, I think it was. This. You hit his chest and, like, like, scar right there. This one, I had this one. Thunder Punch, he man. Okay, yeah. Battle armor. I had this one, but I didn't have that. I didn't have I didn't have that sword right there. Mine wasn't like that. Mine was just a regular gray sword. But I had that particular He Man right there. And my skeletor was the same way. But if you put both uh swords together back to back they would lock together that's why I had that one right there but uh anyway so he breaks the two swords together and Skeletor walks up and he says some well, he's on the ground hurt and he says something like the sword of power is held by a boy and something and then they they get zapped to somewhere we well, already know the spoilers so i know where they're going but they get zapped and that's it so duncan and orko and tila make their way back to the castle they tell the prince uh sorry they tell queen marlena and the king randor what happened and in the 80s cartoon, I think Marlena, 
she sort of had an inkling that He-Man and Prince Adam were the same. But in this one, she, she already knew. So, okay, whatever. And Randor didn't know at all. So when Duncan tells him, he gets mad and he banishes Duncan. And if I ever see you in, around here again, I'll have you executed. I'm like, really? That's not Rand. That's not Randor. Surely he would have he would have respected the fact that hey, you know, my son chose to not tell everybody because it would be the same thing with. Superman and Lois and uh, Lex Luthor, you know, somebody would always be taken and used as a pawn in order to draw Superman slash Clark Kent, or in this situation, He-Man and Prince Adam, how it would always be that situation again. So surely, well, I mean, of course, Randor wouldn't know of Superman, Clark Kent, but he wouldn't know of that analogy, but you know what I mean. Surely he would have been understanding of that, not just all of a sudden getting pissed off and banishing Duncan. That was, that's, I don't see Randor doing that. And then, Tila gets pissed off. Oh, I've defended myself. I mean, I've defended this realm a bunch of times and this is how y'all treat me. Everybody knew this. He-Man was Prince Adam and nobody told me and blah, 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 blah. Crown like a little girl. So I'm going to leave. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, that's not Tila. And I don't know what... The, if you're not going to respect the source material, don't do it. Or at the very least, don't say that this is going to be a spiritual successor to the 80s Legacy series. And then trash it like this. Just reboot the series, and hey, look, this is a new modern take of the 80s series, and this is not for y'all who grew up watching it. This is for a totally new generation, and be done with it. But since I've gotten this far, I'm going to finish it up just so I can give y'all my thoughts of each episode bit by bit. So, till next time, guys.